All right, let's move now to the uh, next part of this lecture on the matching model of the labor market. So we've defined uh, what makes a good model. We are now going to build that matching model. Um, so the first part that we are going to build is uh, the labor supply part. So, um, so the labor supply is going to be um, quite different from um, what you've seen in neoclassical models of the labor market. So usually what we call the labor supply is the amount of labor that workers are willing to supply at a given wage, right? And um, here it's going to be... Um, it's going to be a bit different. Um, so here the labor supply is going to give us a number of workers who are able to find work uh, given the wage um, that's paid by firm, but also given the labor market tightness. Um, so here our labor supply it's going to depend both on wages and, uh, and on tightness. So that's going to make it a bit different. And in fact, the labor supply, we'll see it's going to be a function uh, of the tightness in its most general uh, setup and possibly also on, uh, of the wage that's paid um, by firm. Uh, so to simplify a little bit the analysis, here, uh, for now, we're going to um, abstract from the wage part and what we're going to assume is that you know, people want to work and at whatever, uh, whatever wage that's available, they are going to take, uh, they are going to take job. Okay? So for now, we're not going to pay too much attention to that wage part and we really want to find the connection between the labor supply and the labor market uh, tightness. Okay. So, um, so this is, uh, this is going to tell us, you know, given the labor market conditions, how many people can find, uh, can find work. Okay, so how can we derive this labor uh, supply curve here? So we have to introduce um, a couple of elements. So we have to introduce uh, a couple of uh, um, parameters first. So parameters are just, uh, you know, they are uh, part of the model that are fixed and that do not uh, change over time. Um, so we're going to introduce H. That's going to be the size of the labor force. Okay. So H is going to be the number of people who are part of the labor force. And uh, we saw that the labor force participation rate is uh, moving over time but it's moving very slowly and the movements in the, in the labor force participation rate are not really driven by uh, what's going on right now in the labor market, by the tightness, by the wage or you know, by the business cycle. It's more you know, uh, long-term cultural factors that drive uh, the participation into the labor force. Um, so here it's not something that our model is going to explain. So we take um, the size of the labor force H uh, as given. Um, so another key uh, parameter here that we're going to introduce is S, which is a job separation rate. I should say. So H is just going to be a positive number. S similarly is just going to be a positive uh, number. So the job separation rate is a rate at which uh, people uh, lose their job okay? and that can capture um, all kinds of things, right? Um, that could be just um, people who decide to quit and move to another job, it could be people who are laid off because um, the economic conditions are not good, it could be people, you know, like jobs that close just because you have new technology, say people are replaced by robots or something like that. Uh, People who, for family reasons, decide to drop out of the labor force. So, this job separation rate captures 
all the reason why people may, uh, you know, why jobs may close and people may lose uh, their job. Um, so if you like, if, if you remember the, uh, what I showed you in the previous lecture, just to get a sense, like what is S in the real world? Well, in the US, um, S is roughly you know 3.5 percent uh, per month. That's uh, just to uh, put a number behind this parameter. Um, so it's roughly 3.5% of the people who have jobs who lose their job uh, every month. Okay, uh, so this is going to be uh, another very important parameter when we think about uh, when we think about the labor supply. All right, so these are our two uh, our two key parameters here. In terms, uh, we also need to introduce. Uh, very important function to think about the labor supply, that's our matching function that we discussed at length in the previous lecture. So we are going to introduce a function M of U, number of unemployed, V, number of vacancy, that's our matching function. Which is going to play a very important role here. Uh, so you remember the properties of the matching function we talked about, it's going to have constant returns to scale, it's increasing in U, it's increasing in V, uh, these are going to be very important uh, parameters here. So we have our two uh, parameters here, we have our matching functions. Uh, so U is going to be the number of unemployed, V is going to be the number of uh, vacancies, and then we can also define uh, unemployment rate and uh, vacancy rate here. So when I use the letter big U, that's just the number of unemployed workers. When I use the letter big V, that's the number of uh, vacant jobs. Then in contrast, when I use the letter small U, that's going to be our unemployment rate. Okay? And when I use the letter small v, that's going to be the vacancy rate. And how are these rates defined? Yeah. Well, so that's a very important definition. So the unemployment rate is the number of unemployed divided by the size of the labor force. Okay? And the vacancy rate we're going to define as the number of vacancies divided by the size of the labor force. So these are our definitions for these two uh, rates. The unemployment rate here and the vacancy rate here. Okay? Um, so I think in terms of uh, notations, uh, variables and parameters, I think that's, uh, that's all we uh, need.